everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, I will take you through how to restrict or limit access to the static website hosted on S3 bucket to certain whitelisted IP addresses. To restrict the access to whitelisted IP addresses, we will use a bucket policy. In this video, we will set up the S3 bucket for static website hosting from scratch so you can follow along as well from the beginning. So we will start with the S3 bucket creation and for that, let's navigate to S3 management console. Now, once you are within S3 management console, click on create bucket from the top right corner and provide the bucket name. I will say static website host hyphen demo hyphen video. Now here we will leave all the option as it is except for the public access setting. So we are going to uncheck this and allow the public access. It's because for the static site hosting to work, we need to enable public access to the bucket. So we are going to check this box saying I acknowledge and then we are going to click on create bucket. Now here we have successfully created the bucket that is static website host demo hyphen video. Now here I'm going to upload few files. So I have that files ready as a part of this directory. So I'm going to select this and drag and drop. I will remove this .ds store files. And then I will click on upload. The files I am uploading will be required to serve a static website that we are going to host on this bucket. So here we have successfully uploaded the files that we will need in order to serve the static website. So now let me click on close. Now as a next step, we need to enable the web hosting. So for that we need to click on properties and scroll down to static website hosting and by default it is disabled. So we need to click on add it and then select enable and as soon as you click on enable, it will enable few options that we need to configure. Now within hosting type, we will select host a static website and within index document, we will select or type in index.html. So index.html means that when anyone hit the URL, which file we want to load. So that is index.html that we want to load. And I will leave rest of the option as it is and click on save changes. Now since we have enabled the static website hosting, let's click on the URL that we will see as a part of the static website hosting. And let's check if we are able to access that website or not. So as you can see, it returns status code 403 forbidden. The reason for 403 forbidden is that the objects in the S3 bucket are not publicly readable. So to make the objects in our bucket publicly readable, we need to write a bucket policy that grants everyone S3 get object permission. So when we grant public read access, anyone on the internet can access our bucket. So let's go back to the S3 bucket and let's scroll down and click on permissions. Now here as a third option, you should be able to see the bucket policy. So we are going to modify this. So we need to click on edit. Now here there are multiple ways to update this bucket policy. So you can click on this policy generator to generate the policy or you can copy and paste the policy over here and save it. Or you can also use this add a new statement functionality to update this bucket policy or to write this bucket policy. So we are going to click on add a new statement and here you should be able to see the skeleton of the bucket policy is populated. Now here we need to configure this parameters. So here uh, we will say in the principle as a wildcard because we want to provide access to everyone and the effect is allow because we want to allow the action which action we want to allow that is s3 colon get object okay because we want to make this bucket publicly readable so we need to allow the action that is get object on which resource we want to allow the resource on which we want to allow is this s3 bucket okay so we are going to say double quotes arn colon aws colon s3 triple colon the name of the bucket so in my case the name of the bucket is static website host demo video so i'm going to copy and paste it over here followed by slash and the asterisk now this policy that we have added will allow everyone on the internet to perform get object it means that anyone can access the website using the url now, once you update this policy, scroll down and click on save changes. Now let's go back to the another tab and try to reload this URL. And now as you can see, the website is loading. 
and here we are able to successfully load this website or this static website that we have hosted on the S3 bucket. Now here as a next step, as a part of this video, we want to restrict the access to this website to a number of IP addresses that we will whitelist. So here uh, we will add a condition to the allow statement that we have just written to define when the allow statement or when that policy should come into the effect. So let's go back to the S3 bucket and scroll down to the bucket policy and say add it. Now here within this uh, policy or within this allow statement, we are going to add the condition. So you can use this functionality and click on this add a condition or you can also manually type in the condition over here. Okay, so let's use this. So let's click on add a condition. Now here within condition key, we want to restrict the access to particular IP addresses. So we will look for the source IP. So select AWS colon source IP. And within qualifier, we will select default and as an operator, we will say IP address. Select that. Now here as a part of the value, you need to enter the list of IP addresses that you want to whitelist. Okay, so as of now, I will enter 0.0.0.0. .0. That is obviously not my IP address. Okay, so that means I should not be able to access uh, this web application that is hosted on this S3 bucket after updating this policy. Now, apart from whitelisting the external IP addresses, you can also whitelist the private IP addresses of the VPC. And for that, instead of selecting AWS source IP, you need to select VPC source IP to whitelist the private IP addresses of the uh, VPC. Apart from that, you can also whitelist the VPC endpoints and for that you need to select source VPC E. Okay, so you can play around with this condition key. Okay, now as a next step, let's click on add condition. And once you have updated the bucket policy, let's click on save changes. Now earlier when we tested the website via URL, we were able to access that particular web application. Okay, now let me reload this. Now as you can see, it returns status code 403 forbidden. It means we are unable to access that web application that we have hosted on that particular S3 bucket. And it's because of the condition that we have added. Now it will only allow or it will only serve the traffic that is originating from this IP address that is 0.0.0.0. .0. Now let's again click on this edit policy. Now here let me whitelist my IP address. So let me copy this IP address from here. So for you to check your IP addresses, you can simply Google what's my IP address or you can simply enter this URL that is ipinfo.io and it will help you with your IP address. So I'm going to copy this and add it over here. And I will save this. Now here I have successfully whitelisted my IP address. So I should be able to access the application that we have hosted on the S3 bucket. So now as you can see, uh, the site is loading successfully because we have whitelisted the IP address. Now here everything is working fine with the bucket policy that we have defined. We are successfully able to restrict the access to specific IP addresses that we have whitelisted. But here we have a problem. The problem is that there is always a possibility of unintended or accidental access over here. So for example, some other policy might end up granting additional permission which is unintended. And by default, there is an implicit deny in the policy and allow statements can override that implicit deny. So to prevent such scenarios, it's always a good idea to have a deny statement in conjunction with the allow statements. So over here within this bucket policy with the allow statement, we are going to add one more statement that is the deny statement. Now to add a new statement, I will simply click over here and click on add a new statement. So here we are adding the statement to and as a part of the principle here, we will say a wildcard and here the effect is going to be a deny. Okay. Action will remain same that is s3 colon get object and as a part of the resource again it's going to remain same so i'm going to copy and paste it over here now along with the deny statement we are going to add a condition so let's click on add and within condition key we will look for source ip 
okay and qualifier will remain as default operator will be not IP address and within value we are going to copy and paste the IP addresses that we want to whitelist so in my case I'm going to copy my IP address as well as I will say 0, .0, .0, .0, .0. Okay, and then we will click on add condition. So now here we have two statements. So what we are doing in the second statement. So here we are saying deny the action that is S3 get object to everyone that is over here that is principal to the objects of which resource to the objects of this resource for all the origin IP addresses except for the IP addresses which are mentioned as a part of the source IPs or which are mentioned as a part of this condition. So here we have a negate condition that is not IP address. Now once you update this, click on save changes. Now if we go back to this URL and reload this, we should be able to successfully access this URL. Now let's go back to the bucket policy again and let's click on edit. Now let me remove my IP address. Let me not whitelist my IP address as a part of this uh, deny statement. Okay, and then let me click on save changes. And now if I go ahead and try to access the application, then it should be 403 forbidden. So, so let me try to elaborate on how the policy evaluation takes place over here. So let's say the incoming request originates from the IP address which is not whitelisted. So same thing happens in my case. So my IP is not whitelisted. Okay. And I'm trying to access this uh, web application and it's throwing me 403 forbidden. Now the policy evaluation logic will start with the implicit deny. And then it will look for any explicit deny statements. And we have one explicit deny statement with a condition over here. Okay. So this is the condition. Now for this deny statement to come into effect, this condition should evaluate to true. Okay, when this condition will be true, then this deny statement will be effective. And now if the incoming IP address is not in the whitelisted list that we have defined over here as a part of this condition, then the condition for not IP address will evaluate to true because as a part of the condition, it will check that if the incoming IP address is not a IP address in this list, then it's true. So the request will be denied. Okay. And now if the incoming request originates from the whitelisted IP address, then this condition will evaluate as false because the incoming IP address is in the list. Hence the deny statement will not come into effect and the flow will move on to the allow statement over here. And again, uh, it will evaluate the condition of the allow statement and based on that the decision will be made okay so so i hope you get the idea about the policy evaluation and how it works in this case so if my ip address is blacklisted or or if it is not defined as a part of both the condition or any of one condition then i will be receiving 403 forbidden so let's try this let's click on edit so let me copy this and add it over here and let's save this now if I go ahead and try to access the application then I should be able to access that now as you can see I'm successfully able to load the application because all the condition satisfies and it's an allow decision overall now if I go ahead and edit this and remove my IP address from the allow statement condition. Okay. And then let me save this. And now if I try to load this application, then it will be 403 forbidden. So what happened is that uh, this deny statement did not came into effect because here I have this IP address whitelisted, but as a part of the allow statement that IP address is not whitelisted to perform get object operation. So that's where here there is an implicit deny in place. So that's the reason here we have 403 forbidden. So guys, again, I hope you get the idea about how this uh, policy evaluation took place and how it worked. And this is how you can basically restrict uh, the traffic to set of uh, whitelisted IP addresses, or you can also, uh, you know, play around with the 
uh, private IP addresses whitelisting for the VPC or you can also whitelist the VPC endpoints, right? So before I close this uh, here, I would like to warn you that while you update the bucket policy, you need to be cautious about losing access for yourself. So please make sure that you whitelist your user ID or username so that you do not lose any access to the bucket. Okay, so be mindful of that. So guys, that's all for this video. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.